Hi guys, congratulations on making it to the final part of this course. Now, we're going to look at the legacy reports in the Google Search Console, the manual action and security issues tab, which won't take too long because it's very simple and very straightforward. And then finally, we'll look at the links section as well. We won't go through the settings um, or about the new version because these aren't really important. They're more kind of admin tools, um, just for Google's reference and for admin for the account. So we'll start off with the security and manual actions section. So this is a very simple report. If you go into manual actions, it says no issues detected. Now a manual action penalty is where Google finds out that you are trying to spam your way to the top of the search results through, I guess dodgy links is the main reason and the main culprit. But if you're using any illicit methods to increase your SEO, then this will be manually flagged by Google. And if you do that, then you get what's called a manual action penalty. And of course, this website hasn't got one of those, which is very lucky because it's quite a spammy website in itself and it's got a few dodgy links pointing towards it, but it looks like I haven't got those dodgy links pointing towards my website um, deliberately. And Google obviously haven't raised that as an issue. Next, we have the security issues report. And again, nothing in this report. So if my website was attempted to be hacked or has been hacked successfully, then this would be raised in the security issues report. Generally speaking, both of these reports will usually have no issues detected unless you're very unlucky or very deliberate with your SEO spam. Next, we have legacy tools and reports. Now, Google Search Console migrated to this new look and feel format maybe two years ago, maybe just over a year and a half ago. And they still have some reports from the old version that they haven't brought into the new version. So they still kept some of these reports alive over here. So you can actually access your old reports and go through those as well. Some of them are quite important. Others are probably not as important and will be probably migrated over to the new system soon. So let's start off with international targeting. When you click this link, you'll notice the look and feel will go back towards if you've been on the search console before, um, an old version of the Google search console. Now, as you can see, my site has no href lang tags, meaning that I haven't tagged my website to appear differently for international audiences. Because of course, if you have a website that you market internationally and you have different languages across your websites, the content is essentially the same, but in different languages, you need to use href lang tags. I'm not gonna cover href lang tags in this, um, if you have href lang tags on your website, then your report will show the languages and the countries your website domain is targeting. Of course, my website is only associated with the United Kingdom, my country of origin. So this is why it doesn't show any data in these reports. It's an important report if you have a large domain with global website areas as well. But in this case, it's not as important for me. So we'll go back here and we will go on to the next report again, and it will be the crawl stats report. Now, when you look at the crawl stats report, what you can see is how many pages are crawled per day within the last 90 days. So it shows you how often the Google bot activity is happening, because of course, Google crawls your website to understand the content and the frequency of how they do that is shown in this report. So it shows you how many pages are crawled per day, the kilobytes downloaded per day because of course if you go onto a website what you're essentially doing is downloading that web content onto your computer or your device via the browser to display the website so downloading is a very important part it shows you how many kilobytes are downloaded per day and then time spent downloading this of course is linked to your website speed the amount of time spent downloading your content by the google bot in the crawl in the last 90 days as well is shown in the number of milliseconds these are important stats if you're really trying to optimize your page speed and you've got issues with crawlability. But generally speaking, these reports aren't majorly used when it comes to using the Search Console, hence the reason they've not been migrated to the new version just yet. They're nice to look at, but really, in terms of insights, you're not gonna get a huge amount from this. You would actually get more value from looking at the crawl reports I've shown you in this course already, in addition to the page speed insights reports as well. So. Not as important, but still a report in here nonetheless. 
Next we have messages, which is just a basic message center. It's pretty much been used, is that there's a new panel for messages in the new search console. It's been migrated across. You can still go in and look at your old messages in the old message system as well. I won't go into any messages. It's just updates anything Google finds when it crawls your website. The same messages you will get in the normal version, um, in the new version, sorry, of the search console. So you don't really need to go to this old version anyway. It's pretty much obsolete. I don't even know why Google continue to give access to it, but it's still here if you really want to look at your old search console format messages. And finally, this report is actually quite an important one that they should migrate because it's actually important for people with large domains who do different types of tracking and have URL parameters. So I'll go into the URL parameters report. I haven't set any up myself. So just to clarify, a URL parameter is where you put a, um, an appendage on the end of your website URL in order to release some new functionality or tracking. So you might notice some websites have a page. And in fact, this page right here has one. We have a question mark and then it has some um, parameters at the end. Now, what can happen is Google could look at those parameters and index pages separately based on those website parameters. So by doing that, what you're doing with website parameters, if your website uses them, is creating duplicate content. So you need to manage that and tell Google what to do with your specific website parameters if you're using them. Personally, my website doesn't use website parameters, but if it did, you can configure the parameters here. So when you click this button, you can actually add a parameter here. You can type in the parameter as it would appear in the URL and then tell Google what to do with it when you've done it. So you can say, does this affect how the user's content, how the content is seen by the user? So when you use the web parameter in your URL, does it affect the content? Sometimes it might be a case of a tab being opened or some kind of dynamic content being imported or changed when you do this. So it's important to tell Google what happens. Is it just for tracking purposes? So does it not affect the page content or does the, um, the tracking parameter or the parameter in your URL affect your web content? If it does, it can change the content and you select that one. And if you do select this one and it does change the content, you can tell Google what to do. You can let Google bot decide, which is usually the default because Google has a good idea and understanding of what to do when it comes across website parameters. You can count every URL, you can count URLs with a specific value, or you can count no URLs. So it's a very advanced piece of kit, this particular report. If you're not sure what to do, you should definitely get some advice from a webmaster or someone who understands this tool, because what you could do is unindex and tell Google to block pages with a parameter that you need to be indexed, and it can cause you to lose traffic. So be very careful with this report, as long as you're confident that the parameters in your URL need to fit a specific format that you want Google to index or not index, then you could make those changes within this report. Next up, we have the web tools report, and this is kind of a general guide, I guess. There's a few tools in here, legacy tools that could still be of interest, but let's take a look. So firstly, we have the ad experience report. So if your website has ad space on it with Google um, AdSense, then you want to make sure that you're not, um, I guess, violating the ad experience and the user experience of users. So in this report, it will tell you on desktop and mobile whether or not your ads and your banners on your website are abusive in terms of the, um, the experience that users are receiving. So um, if you go onto desktop, for this report, I'll go on to this particular website because I know it's got ad space. It's not been reviewed yet, so um, preemptively fixing any ad experiences is an option. It tells you what you should and shouldn't do if you click this link in terms of your ad experiences and you know what you should and shouldn't be doing to affect user experience. And of course, for mobile as well, it's not been reviewed on my site, and it says you should again preemptively look at this report and see if there's any issues with how ads are showing on your website. Next, we have the abusive experiences report. Now, this report is an interesting one. All this website, all this report does is it tells you if your website is tricking users. So if a user goes onto your website and they are redirected or tricked or there's something really spammy going on with your ex website experience, then this report would tell you if your website is abusive. And if enforcement is on, it would mean Google Chrome would actually inform the user that the website is dodgy, that is spammy. I'm sure you've gone to a website before, you click the link and it says warning, this website has been known to be phishing or scam or misleading. Um, and if 
if they do that, it means your website is basically, you know, it's, it's the experience is spammy and it's either been hacked or you're deliberately trying to mislead users and spam them or go phishing and take their data. Next, we have testing tools. So these are some of the tools I mentioned previously in terms of testing your, your markup. So I won't go into these because I showed you this in the last section of the course in terms of checking the website markup for your pages. It's the same tools that I've used already to show you that markup. Then you've just got a general other resources tab, which kind of advertises Google's other products. So you've got analytics, Google ads, Merchant Center, Google My Business, PageSpeed Insights. So all the usual suspects of all the Google tools out there. And finally, the last link takes you back to the search console, which we'll go back to anyway. So that completes the Google Search Console training course. This has been a free course. I hope you've got some value out of it and you're more comfortable navigating and understanding the reports within here and of course setting up your account as well. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any other questions other than that, then please just get in touch with me directly. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys on my next video.